Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Pigskin Pass with Joe Zagorski. Topic, Tom Maddy's wristband. Tom Maddy was a first-string running back for the Baltimore Colts during most of the 1960s and the early 1970s. In 1965, however, Baltimore's first-string quarterback, John Unitas, and their second-string quarterback, Gary Quazzo, were both injured late in the year. During those years, a team usually didn't have a pool of candidates to play the all-important quarterback position. Baltimore head coach Don Shula did have a player who played quarterback in college for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Shula asked Tom Maddy to play quarterback for the Colts. It was an emergency situation. No one really knew how well Maddy would perform behind center. But to prepare for the job, besides typical practices that Maddy took with the first team offense, Maddy had his wife write down on a small three inch by two inch piece of paper, a list of over three dozen plays. He then covered the list with a piece of clear plastic. The final step was to get the Colt seamstress to sew a piece of elastic on the top and the bottom of the plastic. The result? It was one of the first wristbands in NFL history with plays written on it. Matty was also smart enough to realize that his new wristband could get damaged. Heck, even Dick Butkus tried to rip it off his wrist in a game against the Bears late in the year. So Matty asked his wife and the seamstress to make a second identical wristband in case the original got damaged. Now, the original is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame today uh, in one of the exhibit rotundas. Most of the plays listed on Matty's wristband were basic running plays, short rollout passes, and some common pitch out runs. It was the stuff that he as a running back was familiar with. Uh, Only now he would call the plays in the huddle. Matty was a demonstrative and a high energy leader. He wore his passion for the game on his sleeve. He wasn't blessed with great speed or moves, but he was skillful enough to play the game and he was rugged and determined enough to hustle for everything that he was worth on every play. In short, Tom Matty led by example. Uh, the Matty led Colts beat the Los Angeles Rams 20 to 17 in their final game of the 1965 NFL season to give the Colts a Western Conference playoff game at Green Bay to play the Packers. They lost to the Packers in that playoff game in controversial fashion, but that's another story for another time. Thanks for listening to the Pigskin Past. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks.
Pick up your copy today. Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.